Hello everybody and welcome back to Flying with Overkill F-16C Viper for DCS World. And today I'm going to do my best to give you guys a demonstration and a tutorial of how to land this bird. We're going to take a both look at ILS landing and um, VFR visual flight rules landing. Um, once again guys, I don't do everything by the book. I'm not going to. If you want extreme detail, I'm not the one for you. But I promise that by the end of this you'll at least be able to go into the sim and do it. Um, speaking of which, I want to give you guys a little tip of how I set up my practice landings because I know a lot of people do this a little bit differently and I thought I might help you out here. So first thing, obviously, I come here, I hit my uh, airplane menu, you know, I select whatever aircraft I want, I set it down. Make sure to set it to client position if you have multiple aircrafts on the same map. Okay, and then we create the first waypoint. Now, what a lot of people do is they'll come to this first waypoint here and they'll set it to landing, which is fine. It does designate the runway as your landing field, but what I the reason why I do it like this, I just set it as a flyover point, and then what I do is I come down here. So normally I think it's like 65, 32, something like that is what the default altitude is. What I'll come here do is do zero and tab down, and it'll set it down at the ground level. Okay, and the reason why I do that, and actually with the F-16 you don't really have to because it sets the waypoint um, at both ground level and up in the air for you, so it works out nice. But I digress. The reason why I do this is I'm putting the waypoint on my landing zone. This is this is the spot where I want my wheels to touch down. Okay, and so it makes it a lot easier to judge your distance, especially when you're learning. Because, for example, um, approximately one mile from your touchdown point, you want to be at about 500 feet above ground level. Okay, now what the um, landing zone does is it sticks it in the middle of the of the runway. Okay, I don't want that. Okay, and I don't know that necessarily does that all the time, but I know with certain runways it absolutely has. I've seen it in the past, but you know, it's just something that I do that helps me. So I just thought I would pass that along. Okay, and I typically set myself at the end of the ILS um, or of the approach um, vectors that they have drawn out for us here. Here you can find the ILS um, uh, frequency as well as the uh, ILS course heading for the runway. Now the problem with this is. The one of the um, one of the um, one of them is off. Okay, so if you type zero seven, uh, I think it's seven four degrees in the um, cockpit, I think that the course line is off if memory serves. But we'll test that in a, in a second here. I'll I'll f figure out which one that I was wrong about because I actually I think it's six eight degrees is what we want for the course line to be correct, and that's because one of them is using true heading, one of them is using magnetic heading. Okay. Um, but anyway, so let's go ahead and jump into the seat of the bird now. And by the way, we've started out here, like I said, at about 11 miles out at 2,500 feet, speed at 300 knots. Okay. So let's go ahead and, oh, last thing. You always want to make sure your fuel is a little reduced. You don't want to be landing with a fuel, with a full tank. Uh, that's pretty unrealistic. They always have a landing fuel or a landing weight, just like a takeoff weight. Um, and it makes it a lot easier on you guys because it takes a lot less time for the aircraft to stop as well. So um, when practicing, make sure that you guys bring your fuel load down. So just come over here to payload and bring your, your fuel down. And then, you know, again, as learning, you know, start with, give yourself a lighter payload when you're starting out too. Okay, all right, so, and let's go ahead and set that to the Bulldogs because I think that's a cool livery. Anyway, let's go ahead and get rolling. So here we are in the cockpit of the F-16, but there's something I want to show you guys before we get rolling. Now we're set at an active pause at the moment. Okay, and what I want to show you guys is if you hit right shift and K for kilo on your keyboard, Okay, it'll bring you to the knee board and the open and close brackets above your enter key and uh, just to the uh, left of your backspace button, you can cycle the pages. And so what we're doing is we've cycled the pages until we find Katasi um, Aerodome chart. Okay, and what you're looking for is these numbers right here. I'm not going to go into all of this, but the knee board's pretty handy. Okay, it tells you runway 07, gives you the location of the actual runway itself. Okay, gives you your variation of your magnetic heading. Now there is um, deviation that happens with magnetic heading between magnetic and true heading. And if you want more information than that, Google it because there's actually quite a bit to it. But what the important part that you need to understand is the elevation of the runway. Okay, we need to know what the touchdown point is. Okay, the altitude is 148 uh, feet above sea level. Um, and then this variation six degrees. And the, what we're looking for with a variation is if you take your ruler right here and you draw a line okay down the length of the runway 
you see that we get uh, 074 degrees as the runway heading okay but that's not exactly true okay this is where the deviation comes to play in the Caucasus area there's about a six degree deviation for all the runways so what you want is the course line of 068 degrees so you take whatever run whatever um, indicator you get here on the ruler so uh, 074 degrees and you subtract six okay so by subtra subtracting six we get 068 degrees and that's going to be our actual course line to get us true onto the flight path for the runway okay and the same thing going for the opposite direction all right um, and the other thing that you can find here that's really handy is you can find your TACAN information tower information as well as the ILS frequency okay and you can see ILS runway 07 that means that coming from this direction is the only direction you're gonna get ILS um, signaling from if you come from the other way you're gonna get it from the wrong approach line it's gonna show your your vectoring is all wrong okay um, so always make sure that you check your charts um, and the other thing you can do here as far as finding out what runway is ILS capable is you can come here click on the center of the runway name here and you get all the same information 147 feet elevation runway length uh, coordinates for the runway TACAN um, this is for VOR navigation um, and then um, you get your two different runways and here it tells you which runway actually is running ILS so we have to come in going this way in order to properly land on an ILS approach okay alright so now that we're done yapping there let's go ahead and get started and see about landing this aircraft alright so the first thing I'm doing here is I'm reducing my speed down to below 300 I'm gonna go ahead and pop the air brake out now you can leave the air brake out if you choose um, for some it's easier for some they don't like it once we're below 300 knots we're gonna go ahead and drop the landing gear you can see we're currently showing radar altimeter by the R next to it now we created our landing zone waypoint out there remember on the mission I showed in the beginning so what we're looking for is at about one mile we want to be looking at approximately 500 feet or as close to it as we can okay so we got landing gear coming down three green there we go indicates all three wheels are down and locked now we have a couple of new things that have popped up here first we have our two and a half degree glide slope line the idea is to fly the two and a half degree glide slope line at 11 degrees of AOA now here's our AOA bracket 11 degrees is going to mean that this um, horizontal line on the flight path marker is going to be just above the AOA uh, bracket okay so we're looking for the flight path marker to be right here on our landing our touchdown point our two and a half degree glide slope line to be at our touchdown point and our AOA bracket to be just under the flight path marker um, as we descend okay so let's go ahead and see what some of this looks like here I'm going to try to walk you guys through everything. Let's go ahead and bring up the controls indicator so hopefully you guys can follow it. This is going to be rudders here on the bottom. This is the stick axis, and these, this is our throttle. Okay, so let's go ahead and get rolling here. All right, so I'm letting it come down. I'm using just let, letting the speed bring it down. Now, as we're starting to fall below where I want to be, I'm just sort of starting to tap the trim up just a little bit. Okay, getting to that 11 degrees of AOA. And once we got it, I'm going to start adding power. Okay, we're getting close. I'm gonna start trimming forward just a little bit. I got a little, a little too far nose down. Okay, pulling off the speed, pulling off the speed. Just about there. Gonna add a little bit of aft trim. Now I got a little low, so what I'm gonna do is power up a little bit. And how I know I'm low is that our two and a half degree glide slope line is below our touchdown point. That diamond, because of where we put our waypoint in the mission header, that's where I want the wheels to touch down, ideally, or very close to it. So what this shows is that our two and a half degree glide slope is going to land us before the runway, because we're landing darn near right on the piano keys. Okay, so I need to climb up a little bit. I've gotten a little low. And you don't have to go too crazy. You don't have to start climbing the aircraft, okay? Um, easy way to do it is more or less just fly level. Maintain, you know, light descent. You don't have to go crazy. And you can see that as we bring the nose up just a little bit, our line's getting closer and closer to where we want it to be. And then once it starts to get back, I'm just coming off the throttle a little bit to line everything back up again. All right. There we go. Adding a little bit of power onto it to sort of maintain that. A little high on the glide slope, not bad. 
But watch that throttle. Hopefully you guys can see it moving a little bit over there. I'm not really paying attention over there on the right, but I'm on and off it, on and off it. I'm a little high. Alright, adding more power, coming back up. There we go, getting closer. And if we pause for a second, you can also see here, we're about 10 and a half degrees of AOA, so I'm a little light on the AOA. So I'm going to go ahead and tip the nose up a little bit with a little bit of aft trim, so I'm going to bring that nose up, okay? And then I'm going to probably have to power the aircraft down just a little bit to maintain our glide slope. Because if we put the nose up at a current speed, we'll climb a little bit. We don't want that. So unpausing, going a little bit aft on the trim. A little bit more. There we go. Just about got it. Maybe one more tap. Okay, now the nose starts to fall. I'm adding power again. So again, altitude is completely controlled by the throttle now. Okay. Minor corrections, you know, with the stick, but nothing crazy. I'm trying to stay off the stick as much as possible. And I'm getting low again, so I'm adding power. All right, so as we get closer, the next thing that you're going to want to pay attention to is about three seconds from landing. Now, I've already got my speed brakes out, so that part's avoided. But if you don't, about three seconds from landing, you want to extend your speed brakes and go to full idle cutoff. Okay, well, not cutoff, excuse me, but throttle to idle excuse me, and then what you want to do is pitch up and flare to about 13 degrees of AOA. Now you can see here the AOA indexer shows us that we're actually a little uh, fast, okay? When you go start to flare, you're going to look at the flight path marker and you're going to want to be right about the center of that AOA bracket, and it's a little bit harder than it looks to, to make that work, all right? Um, but once you get on there, okay, you'll see that the donut comes on. You get a green donut indicating proper AOA, and here we'll be seeing about 13 degrees. But it's a little difficult to be looking down here. But it is important to understand that you don't want much more than 13 degrees. As anything higher than that, you risk uh, damaging the speed brakes if they're extended, and you risk um, striking the exhaust nozzle on the ground damaging the aircraft. So, um, But once the main wheels touch down, then we're going to want to hold that nose up and do what's called aero braking. That's basically using the fuselage and the wings of the aircraft to help slow it down. Once we drop below about 100 knots, the nose wheel will come down. Then we're going to tap our stick forward just a little bit to spoil any lift that's on the back elevators and on the wings. Okay, and then start applying our wheel brakes. Okay, once the aircraft begins slowing down with the wheel brakes, we can then pull all the way back with the stick, and that'll bring the elevators up, which will again add uh, even more drag onto the airframe and help slow us down even more. Once we get below 60 knots, we can then reactivate nose wheel steering with our nose wheel steering button and control the aircraft and taxi off the runway once we reach the, a slower speed. Okay, remember turning speed for the F-16 on taxi is approximately 10 knots. Okay. All right, so let's see if I can do this without screwing it all up for you guys. All right, so again, a little high, so I'm bringing her down. And you can also, I don't know if you guys caught it, but at about one mile, we were at right about 500 feet, so which is where we want to be. Oh, getting fast and high again, so coming off that throttle. We don't have to land right on the keys, but... Wanted it close. Still watching that throttle. We're going to land a little long. I got a little long there. All right, so we're about three seconds. So I am at zero idle, starting my flare. Keeping that nose up, keeping that nose up. Waiting for it to come down on its own. All right, nose wheels down. I'm going to start tapping left and right brakes. I've already pushed the stick forward just a little bit to spoil the speed or the lift on the elevators. Dancing my wheel brakes back and forth to slow her down. Below 60 knots, we can re-engage nose wheel steering. Easy, girl. That was my fault. I was actually pushing on the left pedal. All right, and that is the basics of how to land the F-16C Viper for DCS World in a straight-in VFR approach. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I am going to go ahead and break these into two videos as we're already about 16 minutes. So stand by for the next one where we'll take a look at ILS approaches. Until then, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Hit that bell for notification of future videos, and I will see you guys soon. Bye-bye.